Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Josh from All The Voice for Swimming Pool Science. It's early, and we gotta go to Yellowstone. The question for today is, where the hell is all the chlorine? So we made it into Yellowstone Park, and uh, the question for today is, what the hell happened to all the chlorine? Where is it? Why is it not in the stores? Why is it so expensive? How come my pool guy can't get any? Why is he raising his prices? Well, it doesn't have much to do with the supply of raw materials. Uh, that's pretty abundant. Most chlorine, actually all chlorine, uh, is uh, formulated from salt. Just like uh, those of you that, is, that have salt chlorine generators in your swimming pool, imagine scaling that up to industrial factory levels, and that's what you've got. Um, so it's not a supply issue. It's, uh, it's definitely, uh, there's a supply chain issue. And of course the fact, and, and you guys may have heard by now, uh, that we had a cl uh, chlorine tablet factory burn down just over a year ago in Louisiana after I believe it was Hurricane Rita, that chlorine factory supplied one-third of the trichlor chlorine tablet supply for the country. And on top of that, you got the pandemic, which drove a ton of people to say, you know what, screw it, we're stuck in our backyards, let's finally build a pool, let's get a pool. You got demand going up, you have supply going down, and when demand goes up and supply goes down, prices go up and scarcity increases. And also um, we were low on bleach, so people were using chlorine. Yes, Nurse Ginger is right. There's been a lot of chlorine being used for cleaning and things like that. Uh, so that is part of why we're low on chlorine. Now, what are we going to do about that? Well, let's talk about that in just a minute. So what the hell happened with chlorine? Two years ago, it was abundant. We were buying it for less than $100 per 50-pound bucket, and now we can't even buy one bucket or two buckets a week. It's just, it's just crazy. Um, to understand it, first you got to know a little bit about the supply chain. The raw materials for chlorine are super abundant. We're talking about salt. They've been mining salt for millennia. The oceans are filled with salt. There's plenty of salt out there. We're just in Salt Lake City. Trust me, there's plenty of raw materials to make chlorine. The problem is the supply chain. Now, we had a chlorine factory burn down during Hurricane Rita uh, about a year and a half, two years ago in Louisiana. That factory supplied a good third of the chlorine to the United States. That means that other companies and other factors are having to step in to fill that market gap and they are completely maxed out on their ability to produce. Keep in mind, this is a chemical that's highly reactive relative to most stuff. So there's EPA regulations and a lot of other things that come into place with how much they're allowed to produce and what their capacities can be at each factory. Now on top of that, you've got a pandemic that rolls in, keeping everybody at home and now all of a sudden everybody needs a pool in their backyard. The pool building industry has been insane like we've never seen it before and that means more people needing more chlorine. On top of that, and as Nurse Ginger will tell you during the pandemic, a lot of chlorine being used for sanitation, different forms like calcium or sodium hypochlorite, that's your bleach, and disinfectant and things like that, that putting further strain on the market. Now, they can't just whip another chlorine factory back up. Again, they've got to clean up the old one. There's EPA regulations, hoops to jump through, permits to get. It's going to take years for that factory to come back. You've also got issues with chlorine from out of the country. Again, supply chain issues. Uh, I've got friends that are working to bring containers of chlorine in from Asia. And once they get them in, that's great. But then they sit in the docks in LA because again, supply chain issues. Uh, there's stuff backed up at the LA docks where it's just, it's taking weeks and weeks and weeks for customs to get to it and for it to get in. So the supply chain has been a big part of this. So now that we know what's going on on the manufacturing side of things, what does that mean for supply to distributors and retailers? Well, it means that things are scarce. And just because you have a chlorine factory and you're manufacturing your own stuff like Leslie's does, doesn't mean you're going to be in deep supply and have abundant, unlimited resources. Uh, because this means that everybody's coming to you now to buy that chlorine. Price-wise, puts you in a good position for profit. But overall, means that there's still not that much chlorine out there. Again, like I said earlier, we've gone to being able to buy chlorine by the pallet, sometimes two to three pallets a week, to the point now where our distributors are only allowing us to buy one bucket a week per company. Well, I lost Ginger and the kids here at Old Faithful. Probably in trouble. But before I get my ass kicked by Ginger, Let's talk about alternatives to traditional chlorine usage in a pool and how we're gonna weather the storm of the chlorine shortage. Um, of course, there are salt chlorine generators. Uh, there's great ones by the big three manufacturers, Fluidra, 
Hayward, Pantera, they all make good units and um, they work really well. And they make chlorine, so you can have your own little chlorine factory. But like anything else, um, it takes time to get them because everything is in short supply right now. Uh, once you do get them, you're looking at about a two grand investment or maybe a little less, maybe a little more depending where you are. And then it's just maintaining it from there and you're kind of immune from this whole chlorine shortage. Uh, other options are supplementing with uh, copper and silver, the Pool RX, uh, stuff like that can help you minimize the amount of chlorine. But again, there's not really a substitute for chlorine because it is the only thing out there that both sanitizes and oxidizes at the same time. It does the whole job. Um, there is, of course, hydrogen peroxide. I know some people that dabble in that. Um, that's really expensive. It's really difficult to get. You're going to have an easier time in this current climate with the chlorine shortage with chlorine than you will with hydrogen peroxide. So the bottom line is, is we need to be able to use less chlorine. Um, if we can use less chlorine, uh, then the chlorine shortage is not going to affect us as much. That means paying attention, keeping it in the uh, three to five part per million range, making sure your cyanuric acid isn't too high so that your chlorine can work properly. Um, supplementing with some algicides here and there and just paying close attention to your pool, maybe even running it longer, uh, things like that. So where is the chlorine? Well, it hasn't been made yet. The supply chain isn't there. The manufacturing isn't there. Um, there is more demand for chlorine than there is the ability to manufacture right now, and that's going to go on for a while. So prepare yourselves. It's going to be a long road. So I found Ginger, and I think I'm in trouble, mostly because I don't think she ordered me any ice cream but also because she's probably a little cranky. Either way, that's the end of the pool part of this video. If you want to watch and stick around and see what we're doing on our trip, please continue to watch. We'll see you tomorrow. Lines are long, even at 7.30 in the morning. They stretch for half a mile. We're here. It's amazing that... That what? Only in America would we line up in droves to see Mother Earth, I feel like. <laughs> well, people aren't lining up to see uh, the area between Moab and Salt Lake City. But um, they'll line up to see other parts of it. amazing how crystal clear the water is. It's really hard to tell probably, I'm sure, but it is just perfectly crystal DE filter clear, man. And there's a few more of these vents, things like this out and around here. We're going to go explore. Breakfast time at Yellowstone. And we're going to ride bikes. No flap. <laughs> She's like, I... Your kibbles. Yeah. Did Elena and Angel already see this? I don't know. This thing is deep, man. There's no telling how deep this is. goes and goes and goes and goes and goes and goes but if someone were to walk here and like miles would step out on that shelf they'd be like stepping out onto a piece of thin ice and in he would go and if he didn't scramble himself out in about a minute and a half he'd be done for the water's probably somewhere around 150 degrees Boiling, man.
So amazing. Wow. 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 How excited all the people are. They're so excited. This is Yellowstone Lake, 7,700 feet above sea level, largest high elevation lake in North America. It's beautiful, the water is Lake Tahoe clear, at least over here, pretty amazing. Nice and quiet. How are we doing, humans? Are we surviving the day? We're gonna make it survive the rodeo next? Cool. What was your favorite thing at Yellowstone, Miles? Rainbow uh, Water. What was your favorite thing, Willow? Geese. Ah, geese.